not all ERPs have everything a company needs. So for example, time and expense. You may have a lot of your staff that are sitting out there in the oil field. You may have them sitting in a warehouse and you're wanting to capture time quickly and efficiently, but you don't necessarily need them in the ERP, but you need to capture this information. So what I wanted to show you is a web-based time and expense application that we at RAND Group have built that we've deployed to a few of our clients. And it really allows you the flexibility, again, being mobile, being everywhere that the client, the customer, your end users need you to be. So if you think about what that web time and expense application would look like, the deployment options really are very straightforward. You can have it just internally facing. You could have it secured where it's um, exposed to the internet with authorized users, which again, security obviously is going to be an important issue here. A rich user and friendly front end is very, very important when you talk about time entry and expense calculations. So we need to make sure that the data is validated, that they're selecting the right day of the week, they're selecting the right project if you're doing project accounting or the manufacturing order, making sure that the data that you're getting is accurate. So that means it needs to be linked. We need an integrated system to Dynamics GP 2015 or the older versions. Um, we need the automatic timesheet generation too. So for example, Susie's on vacation, I need to automatically generate her timesheet. We needed some flexibility here with time entry, not just Susie's going to enter her time um, for every hour of the day she works, because um, let's say that I'm sitting out there in the oil field, I've been working, today it's five o'clock, I'm gone, I'm on vacation, but I've now forgot to do my timesheet. I may need some delegation of entry. You know, I am no longer available. I, I could be on a boat in the middle of the ocean and I can't do my timesheet. So how do we get the process to be restricted, but it needs to be flexible? So delegation of entry, delegation of approval is all there. And we also need seamless integrations, not just with GP, but with payroll and projects and different modules to make sure that we're getting our time and our expenses entered properly. So I'm going to quickly demo the application for you, but here's a quick view of kind of some of the advantages you get with the application. So you get email notifications. Um, so if you would like to get those notifications, it can tell you that Susie submitted her time for approval or Susie hasn't submitted her time for approval, which may be just as important. It could go to managers, administration, delegation of those options. Who needs to get those notifications? Reporting of time is always something that is important. And, so, and when you talk about project accounting or project um, time ex and expense, you may not want the direct report of that person to be approving that time because we may be sharing it with a different project where you know, it may be reporting to someone else on a project. So team reporting, organization reporting. So when you look at how time and expense is entered, it's a very broad requirement of what clients are needing. So I'm gonna show you quickly the application that we have put together here at Rain Group. And when you look at the application itself, it's very straightforward time entry, but what you've got here is I can impersonate someone. So I can maybe go in as Michael Glass and do his timesheet if he had forgotten to do his timesheet, but I can also do it for myself. It's going to select the projects that have been set up in GP for time entry accessibility. So not all the projects maybe I have ability to code time to but these are the projects that are set up in GP that I can code my time to. I can, what day of the month or the week am I gonna code my time? How many hours to this project? And again, to this cost code. So if you look at entering in, I have different cost codes within that project and all the cost codes can be different per project. They could be the same depending on your company structure and your projects. 
Now, if you're not doing project accounting, you don't have to enter in the projects. The, the screen, again, is then modifiable where you're not coding two projects. But most of our clients now are looking at some type of accounting project process for of time, whether it's to project, manufacturing orders, what am I coding my time to? I put in my number of hours I've worked and I put in a description. So I am doing consulting fees and assisting client with workflow integration. I can then add it to my timesheet. And if you'll notice, now I have a new line here for my time. On the far left, I have time for previous weeks that I may have entered that may not be approved or just for my review also. If you notice at the bottom, I have a weekly summary, so it'll tell me Monday through Sunday, my total hours and utilization. And utilization could be based on company projects versus client or customer projects. And then I have a summary by project. What have I worked on through this week and how many different projects. So at a, at a glance, as a user, I have complete control of how my timesheet looks. These timesheets can be submitted daily. They can be submitted weekly. The, the day in your week period may change, so that can be modified also. Ours just happens to be in this example, Monday through Sunday, but yours could be Saturday through Sunday. So really looking at how you would like to build your your workflow also is going to be important. So when I submit my time, I could submit and my timesheet could be approved by my manager or it could be approved by project. So I could have 15 different projects, which each line on my timesheet may need to be approved by a different project manager, which the system is designed to do. So giving you the flexibility as a company, again, this is a web-based application, internal, externally exposed, that your users can go in. They do not need to have access to GP. They don't need to understand GP. They don't really need training into GP. All they need to know is how to enter in their time. There's also the ability, for example, if you wanted to, within this project, you may have cases, you may have support cases, you may have manufacturing cases. It's a sub-level of reporting that you may need to report against for time entered. There's a lot of feature functions within it. If I selected this line, I could actually, if you'll notice, the top part in my header is now pre-populated. I can modify the information and save it as a new record. Okay, I can add a new one. If I highlight it again, I then have the same feature functions. I, if you notice here, I've got the funnel. I can do any type of sorting and selecting I would like on my lines, because I could, in reality, have a 50-line timesheet, depending on how many times I'm working on different projects, different cases maybe, what, what am I doing? that's creating a, maybe a large timesheet and making it something that the end users can actually use. They can review before they submit their time, is my time correct? Once you complete your timesheet, it then would go into the timesheet approval screen. Now, the approval is going to be based on the workflow and then the workflow can be configured. So if you look at my example here, I review it, I have one timesheet to approve for Michael Glass. Now again, when you look at the um, timesheets itself, what happens when I am not in the office? Uh, it is 10 o'clock in the morning, timesheets were already supposed to be approved, but I am sitting, I am, let's say, stuck in a meeting with a client do not have my laptop and there is no way that I'm going to be able to approve that time. I have admin approval here where I can actually, someone from the admin group who's been given security rights can approve my timesheets for me. So never again are we waiting for payroll, we're waiting for project accounting for approval of time. The admin can go in there and do it. And then obviously I will have my reports that I may need 
to really understand the data that is out there. And we have a full set of reports that are available. Again, these reports are SQL based. So when you look at the information, um, it, it's going to give you real time information. And there is a large cat catalog of those reports by project manager, by team. Again, organization, employee specific, really giving you at a glance the information that you need. Again, web based and mobile. As long as I can log in, I can get this information. And along with the timesheets, we have expenses. Again, this is something that is very useful when you're traveling and you're racking up your expenses and you always have to either get back to the office to do your expenses, but now what you can do is on the fly, as you're racking up your expenses, enter them into your expense sheet, you also have the ability to, to add an attachment. So what I have done in the past is taken a picture using my phone of my receipt, emailing it to myself and attaching it, or just a, via my phone attaching it. So giving yourself the, the flexibility to get that information in quickly because the sooner, as we all know, you get your expenses in, the better, right? Because you're not gonna forget something. You're not gonna lose that receipt. Need to get that information in. So again, this information it can be coded by project, internally external projects that you may be working on. Again, you could have cost codes that are associated with that expense. I have my dollar amount, lunch with client, right? Add it. And again, I do have the ability, as I mentioned, to add an attachment when I complete my expenses, it then will will go in for approval. So if you look at your expenses, you have the same ability, whether I have the admin approval rights, the inquiry into expenses. And I think if you're an admin person within the application too, you have a lot more controls of what you can see. So we have the integration monitor, which means everything is real time with GP. So I can tell the last time it ran, if there's anything pending, I can turn off an integration if I need to. If there were errors, I can see my errors. I can see my setup. So there is a lot of user-friendly front-end information where I don't need a developer. I just need to be able to monitor what the system is doing, and it gives you the ability. And again, within admin, you can set up your users, departments, um, you have your settings that you can set up. Again, giving a full feature rich environment for all of your users to be accessing the system. Again, web-based being mobile is very, very important. So when you look at the application itself, it is look, it's looked at as being streamlined, fully integrated with GP. You, complete data validation, complete workflow, and also real time as you can approve as often as you need. We actually can approve our timesheets daily, which makes it much easier if you're doing project accounting. On a daily basis, I can tell where my project is as far as man hours go and maybe expenses. So looking at a timesheet is just one way of helping the automation helping the integration when you don't have to worry about flat file movement for payroll it gives you the ability to have seamless integrations and also making sure that your end users are being efficient in entering their time entering their expenses um, especially if you're a professional services company time is money right so getting those that time in is more important than anything so that is one example of how efficiencies can be gained through applications, not necessarily within Dynamics GP, but with a tight integration into GP.